Man, that song always stirs me up. I tell you what, I could jump on that one. Is it possible to get any kind of light down here? It's dark on my Bible. And I need some, we need some light, light, light. Y'all not mad, are you? Man, I'm excited about this morning. Yeah, just turn all the lights on if you can't find any light. I want some light. Thank you, sir. Oh, I can see. Yeah. There's nothing worse than there going, I need a pair of readers and turn the lights on. No, I don't. Well, in the dark, that's like Paul. He said, see such a large hand, the letter that I have written you. The reason he said that wasn't because he had an eye disease, as the pastor said at the other church. He said that because he was in a dungeon and it was dark and he had to write large to, be, to see and to know. Oh well, anyway. I'm going to enjoy today if I have to do it all by myself. Look at somebody and grin. You know what that means? That means at least the worst thing that can happen in here is I'm the only one that will have fun. And I'm going to do it. We're talking about faith and we're talking about words. We're talking about living by faith. Last week... What did we talk about faith last week? What was kind of the title issue of it? I'll help you out. Whatever is not faith. All right, I'll help you out big time. Whatever is not faith, and you be quiet. Whatever is not faith is. <laughs> he won't say, go ahead, say it. Yeah, he can't stand it. He wants to be the hot dog. He, he does. And he's correct. It's sin. Whatever is not faith is sin. They missed it. They missed it. If it's not faith, you're going to miss it. So we want to stay in faith. Look at somebody say, stay in faith. Oh, yeah, those people go in and out of faith like cars. They jump in and out. Man, you want to get in faith and stay in faith. You want to go for it. Now, we're going to go to Luke in the first chapter, and we're going to read most of the first chapter, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. And I'm really getting to the place in my senior years here now. I believe I can actually slow down a little bit because I can see next week. <laughs> I used to think everything had to happen right now. Y'all sure are quiet. I don't know what they have done to you guys, but when we get through here, we will have you oiled up, prepared, patched, and ready to go. How about totally restored? We're going to start in verse 5. I like verse 5 because the first words in capital letters, every one of them in my Bible, and it says there. All right? Now, I could preach on there all day long, but let's move on because we want to talk about Zacharias. Does anybody know what his name means? His name means to be remembered. He is not forgotten. And there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest, Zacharias. And of course, this is Jesus' uncle. You do know this is his uncle. And his name is Zacharias. He's of the course of Abia. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron. What a lineage. Her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments. Can you listen to this? Walking in the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Whew. You say, boy, was that hard? You say, you know how you can do that today? You don't even have, you don't even have the Ten Commandments anymore. When Jesus came, he took all ten of them and wrapped them up in two. And he said, if you'll just do these two commandments, the other ten will take care of their self. What was the two? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And your neighbor, which means, believe it or not, go look it up. The word neighbor means Christian friends. That's what it means. Okay? God wants you to help everybody, but he has an especially for the faith people. He says in the word, do good to all men, especially, he says, unto the household of faith. You're going to give somebody $20 because they're willing to work for food. You ought to give it to somebody in the household of faith first. I'm serious. It's like your children. You, you, there are all these kids out here naked and you got a pair of britches. Which one are you going to with them britches? You're going to your kid. That's your nature. Are y'all mad at me? You're going to take care of what God has put in your hands. 
And then it says, they were both righteous. And in verse 7, it says they had no child. Now these, they're up in age. I don't know their age. They're probably old as I am. They're way up yonder. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. She's never been able to bear children, and now she's too old. Both. By the way, it is important to note that in their day, especially back then, even today, a woman that doesn't bear a child is like a curse from God. And a woman that bears a child is like a huge blessing. It's like the Lord is pleased with a woman when she can bear children. That's their thinking and their understanding. So to be barren is like a curse. It's nothing exciting. Uh, all the neighbors and friends are not really excited about hanging around you and everybody knowing that's your friend because you're barren. That's true. And they both were now well stricken in years and it came to pass that while he executed the priest office before God in the order of his course, this is talking about what that's referring to is the tabernacle of Moses. You remember when we did the tabernacle of Moses, a replica, small replica compared to the real thing, but we did it and the incense in the tabernacle represents what? Worship. And the priest, all the priests are assigned to different stations in the tabernacle. That was his place was to go with the incense. That's where worship. It's all worship. So he goes in and that's, that's what he's doing. He executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Verse 9, according to the custom of the priest's office. And his lot was to burn incense when he went in the temple of the Lord. That's the tabernacle of Moses. And the whole multitude, now not the tabernacle of Moses in the wilderness, but the tabernacle of Moses that was in the wilderness has now been brought into Jerusalem. And this is where they go to worship. And the whole multitude of the people were praying out at the time of incense. And there appeared, and this is worship, incense is burning, God's being worshipped. Old Zechariah's in there giving God praise and glory and honor. He was a righteous man, he didn't live in sin. He was awesome. And it says, <clears throat> there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. The reason it said right side of the altar of incense is because Scripture always teaches you that the right side always represents all authority and all power. So he's already announced that he has all authority and all power because he's on the right side. And Zechariah saw him, he was troubled. Fear fell upon him. And thou shalt... Fear... <laughs> jumped ahead of verse. But the angel said to him, Fear not. Zacharias, old remembered one, for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and you will call his name John. Now let's just stop for a minute. <clears throat> you got to understand old Zach here didn't just go in his grandpa and said, Lord, I'd love to have a son. And he go, okay, we heard your prayer. We're going to give you and your wife a son since you're so old, you're coughing dust. You don't worry, we got you covered. That's not what that was. She's been barren all their marriage. His prayer is he wants a son. He doesn't want his wife to have reproach. He wants her to be blessed of God. He's always wanted that. But y'all know how it is after you get your social security check. You just ain't supposed to be happy no more with them little babies. Social security and babies don't seem to go good. Y'all know where I'm coming from. Can I get it? This lady is in a pickle. I'm here to tell you. So the angel said, don't be afraid, Zach. Your prayer's been heard. It's kind of like, well, I'm glad you heard my prayer, Lord. <coughs> but uh, <laughs> I sure wish you'd answered it about 75 years ago. you know. So anyhow. It's kind of like me. I'm going to be going to graduation when I'm 83. So, your wife Elizabeth shall bear thee. Think about it. Now, he's talking grandma and grandpa as far as age goes. He says, and your wife shall bear you a son. You know he's got to be thinking. Now? How about when we could pitch, play ball, go fishing, and swim? I guess I do need a son now so he can tote me around. 
pull my cart, feed my goat. Anyway, bear a son, and you will call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. I know he needed to hear that because he's got to be thinking, now wait a minute. First of all, I come in here to worship God with incense. And then this guy appears to me, scares me, and then tells me not to be afraid, that everything's cool, and that I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have a son. His name's going to be John. Now, this man is going like, what? I asked for all of this years ago. It's not in Scripture that, but think about it. Think about it. His wife been barren all their life. He has always wanted her to be blessed. And then he says, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great. Don't you know he's still flipping? He's hearing all this, and he's telling him all these things about his son. He's going to be great in the sight of the Lord, and he won't drink neither wine, I wish that was my kids, and nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I want them to be my kids. Are y'all all right? Even from his mother's womb. I get tickled at people. Well, you can't get filled with the Holy Ghost unless you wait and tarry long enough. Hey, you come out of the womb filled with the Holy Ghost, that's long enough, isn't it? I mean, he got filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Many of the children of Israel will, will turn to the Lord. Now where we're going, believe it or not, I don't have time to go there, but just so you'll know. The very, very last verse in the Old Testament. Does anybody, can you pull up Malachi, please? The very last verse in Malachi. And just throw it up on the screen. And while you're doing that, I'll read this. Many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and in the power of Elias, and that is Isaiah called Elias. That's the way it's spelled in the New Testament. And he will go in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And, of course, verse 18, I might pull up in a minute. Does the other verse come up yet? And he, oh, you got my old one there. Okay, you're doing good. Well, I'll read 18. And Zacharias said this to the angel, whereby, or how about the old three-letter word, how? <laughs> whereby shall I know this? How shall I know this? I'm an old man. My wife, she's now well stricken in years. She's getting to be a little antique there. Can y'all find Malachi last chapter? You can't put it on the screen back there? Okay. Oh, okay. Why didn't you tell me to turn around? I'm just picking. Thank you. Now, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Least I come and smite the earth with a curse. Can Do verse 5. Back up to verse 5. Behold. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, when is the grateful? When is, did you see that? When, and he says, and I'm going to come in the day of the Lord. When's the day of the Lord? Anybody know? You all know, you just won't say it. In this scripture, he's referring to the birth of Christ. And Elijah, according to the scripture, is going to appear in the earth to do the will of God. You know, he would never died. God just took him up. And then he says that Elijah, the spirit, and the power of Elijah should be upon him. And this is where a lot of the church gets messed up. They're waiting for a physical flesh Elijah from the past to raise from the dead and do it. But honey, Jesus even said himself, he said, if you can bear this, he made it real clear. That's who John is. I'm paraphrasing it, but that's what he said. If you can bear this, that's who John is. That's the spirit of Elias. That is the spirit of Elijah. That man has the spirit to walk in 
power of God like he'd never seen before. And he did. And so notice how Malachi last prophesied what was going to happen. And he says in verse 17 in Luke, he says, 116, which is part of the last, he says, And the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God and go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So he's not only Zacharias to be remembered the old man who is a priest of the Lord in the tabernacle who is doing a very important job on worship with the incense. But when that angel appeared and set apart his duties and what he's doing, he was like, hold it. And the reason this is important, it happens to you and I. I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, 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 no. When I get old, my wife's not getting pregnant. I don't mean pregnancy. I mean being in a place that the Spirit of the Lord shows up and wants you to do something. It's so easy. I'm too old. Why didn't he tell me to do that when I was young? Well, I... And see, we start leaning on our own strength, our own wisdom. We see things our way. And we start saying what we see and instead of agreeing with what we heard because what we heard has the power to change everything that you can see. So if you base what you do with God on what you can see, you will miss Him by every time. But if you will base what you do and what you say on what He said, it will change the things you see. What you see will change. You see a mountain, but when it gets in that ocean, it's flat prairie out there now. Hello? The prairie is just flat. It was a mountain, but today it's flat. Now, how about the prairie needs a mountain? <laughs> today it's flat, tomorrow there's a mountain. Things change. Nothing stays the same. Nothing. Everything in the earth, including cells and molecules, they're in rotation and turning in circles and moving. Ecclesiastes says everything moves in a circle. In chapter 3, it says everything that's ever happened is even going to happen again. Are you all right? So once you've learned from history, you know it repeats because the Word says it does. And when you learn from it, the next time it comes around, you ought to know a little bit of what to do. Remember the first time you ever got shocked? You didn't know there was a such thing as shocked. Hello? And then when you found, it's a different day, wasn't it? Everything changed. I think some people could use a good shot. But I, because of time, though, I've, I need to move on. I'm about to go into another subject here with old Zach. But Zacharias told the angel, he said, I need to know how I'm going to know this. I'm old, antique, you know. I mean, how are we going to do this? My wife doesn't even like to go on date nights anymore. We're we having a hard time here. And this, the angel answered and said, but I'm Gabriel. Y'all know what Gabriel means? Champion of God. He said, I'm the champion of God. I stand in his presence. I stand in the presence of God and I am sent to speak. Now see, we're talking about faith. Faith and words are inseparable. And he said, I've been sent to speak. He wasn't sent to be seen. He was sent to be heard. And to show you some glad tidings, these glad tidings. He said, and behold, thou shalt be dumb. I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's what my family said to me. No, he's not referring to being ignorant about things. <laughs> Thou shalt be dumb as though you cannot speak. Dumb. Words cannot come out of your mouth. Think about it. This is the priest. And God's telling him right off the bat through the angel. All right, pal. You're going, I'm too old. It can't happen. How's it going to be? This ain't right. Well, I just shut your mouth. Because if I shut your mouth, says the Lord, I'm paraphrasing, then what I said is just not going to get interrupted with your doubt and unbelief or any of your disobedience. I fix it. That's what he said. And so behold, you'll be dumb, not able to speak until the day that these things be performed. That means the birth of his son. Because thou believes not my words, we have no idea what we have missed in this life. Don't mean it condemnationally, worriedly, and all that, but we really don't have any idea what we've missed in this life by not hearkening to the words of God. 
I'm always telling my sons and my family and my friends, this Bible is a sack of seeds. I so I have to make it as simple as I can. If you will sow them in your garden, in your vineyard, they have the ability themselves to grow. But if all you can do is go out in the yard, go to the river, watch television and sleep and eat and never stick your nose in the word, you have no seeds growing. So when you really need a harvest of godliness, it's just not there. You got plenty of thorns and briars and weeds. They've been growing like crazy and been watering them. But the word of God is a seed. Jesus said so, Mark chapter 4. And I mean, all, I mean Luke chapter 4. He says it all the time. Words and seeds are inseparable. He said the kingdom of God's like a man that went to sow Seeds. You want to know the principle of the kingdom is words and seeds. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word was made flesh. Dwelled among us. We beheld the glory of the Father, the only begotten. How do we beheld the glory of God? Through word? Words. How would you get born again? Words. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be. Not might be. I just, the reason my faith is so great is just because God said you shall. I just decree he's all truth and there's not a lie in him. If there was, the universe would explode because the Bible says that the whole entire universe is held together by the power of his words. God's own words is holding it together. Hmm. And then he goes on to say, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I'm sent to speak these things, to show you some glad times. Behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things be performed, because you didn't believe my words, and they shall be fulfilled in their season. Yes, they will. And the people waited for Zechariah. They're all outside the temple. He's in there worshiping, having this experience. Nobody knows it. And now his mouth's been shut. Now all priests have to talk. If you can't talk, you can't do much priest work. <laughs> and so his mouth's shut. And his wife's getting ready to get pregnant. That's something. I bet if all pregnant women wish their husband's mouth would be shut. Anyway, let's move on. As the people waited for Zechariah and marveled that he tarried. Now that boy stayed in church all night. What's wrong with him? And so he was so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not talk to them. And they perceived he'd been in a vision in the temple. <laughs> for he beckoned to them. Beckoned, that, that means he was trying to talk. I have no idea what it was. I don't know if he could make noise and couldn't pronounce words. Or if it was total silence. But they knew he was trying to talk and he couldn't. That they knew. He beckoned to him, and he remained speechless. So it came to pass as soon as the days of ministration were accomplished and he went on to his own house. There's, it takes time to go through the procedure of worshiping in the tabernacle. When everything was said and done, he went home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. That means that Silent Jack, he finally had to get his mouth shut, I guess, to get in the position to have a baby. <laughs> Maybe he run his mouth so much Elizabeth wouldn't have nothing to do with him. But nevertheless, you know the principle. God shut his mouth. Believe it or not, that's where I'm going with this. It's really about all his mouth being shut. And so he, <clears throat> Elizabeth conceived and hid herself. Have you ever known a woman to get pregnant and go hide? Yeah. Me too. Big time. We did. Because we conceived before marriage didn't mean to. Just like everybody else didn't mean to. Absolutely, total accident. So, it, in our day, uh, you know, 44 years ago, 45 years ago, you get pregnant, everybody point and talk. I mean, you was kind of marked. It's not like today. You, you, you can get pregnant today, it's like everybody throw a party and you don't even know a guy. You don't even know who the daddy is. But man, we're going to have a baby. You know, it's just different. Trust me, it's just different. 
And so Elizabeth is conceived here, and here she is at her age. At the same time, because she's conceived, it's telling everybody that understands godly principles that she's been highly favored with God and that she is truly blessed. And so Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself for five months. Five is grace. And thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me and took away my reproach among men. And to paraphrase that, he sure waited until I got old to show everybody and there's no reproach on me. And in the sixth month, now here she is, she's six months pregnant. And the angel Gabriel was sent from God again. Here he comes. He's then come and told her what his, what his job is, John. And then, boom, now he's coming back again. In the sixth month, when Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, he was sent to a virgin whose name and spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. You do know that that's one thing awesome about Joseph. He's from the lineage of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now, after the child was born, she's known as Madonna. The reason she's called Madonna, and no offense to anybody named Madonna, I'm not asking you to change your name, but the reason she's called Madonna is the same reason that they call God Jehovah. They call God Jehovah because man was not supposed to pronounce his name because it's so holy it shouldn't come out of your lips. So they call him Jehovah. That's not his name. That's what we call him so we won't say it. Y'all looking at me real funny. Anyway, it's, they call him Jehovah. What is his name? Yahshua. But we're not supposed to say it. But that's Old Testament. In New Testament, we in blood covenant. Hallelujah, I'm his bride. Are you hearing me? I come from his rib. I mean, you can go on and on. I'm Larry Jesus. That's my name. Mr. and Mrs. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Woo! And the angel came to her and said, Hell, thou art highly, fav highly favored and the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And she cast in her mind her thoughts. What matter of situation this could be? And the angel said to her, don't fear. You found favor with God. Now watch this. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Same thing's happening with them that was happening with Zach. He's getting a word from Gabriel about a child coming and now here's Mary getting a word from the same angel about her child coming and he told her he shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. When God started that kingdom 2,000 years ago it'll never stop. It says, then said Mary to the angel. Now notice, Zach, he said, how's this going to be? I'm old. But watch. She, she said this to him. How can it be since I don't know a man? You see the difference? Zach was going, I'm too old to do this. Mary's just simply saying, how do you get pregnant without a guy? I mean, seriously. She said, How? How's this going to happen? Her question is not as much as in doubt and unbelief as it just very simply is. It, this is not the normality of bringing children. I, what? And then it says, and the angel said to her, the Holy Ghost shall come on you and overpower. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Look, and all of a sudden, here comes Elizabeth. She had also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, and she was called barren. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. Anybody in here want to have another baby? Been told you can't? 
Okay, I'll wait for the next crowd. <laughs> Maybe somebody does. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it, and watch, be it unto me according to my feelings and my emotions and what I think. <laughs> thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. I love this. It says, and the angel departed from her. And then, of course, y'all know the whole rest of the story. But now what I want you to get at is, is this has everything to do with the mystery of the gospel coming into the world and into your mind and heart. Everything. And the whole thing of Zechariah, I love the way God teases the devil like a cat and mouse game. That devil thinks he's got everything figured out. He's trying to kill every prophet that comes. He thinks every one of them is the son of God. He thinks John the Baptist is the son of God. Hello. That's why he got his head cut off. He thought he killed the son of God. And he could not cut his head off until he finished what he come into the earth to do. John the Baptist came into this earth for the spirit of Elijah to come upon him so that he could walk straight path and make a way for Christ who is coming out of the womb of a virgin that knows no man and the young one that's coming out of that womb is going to grow up to the Son of God is going to walk in John the Baptist's path. And John the Baptist is going to prepare that path for him and make it straight and he's going to preach straight righteousness, nothing else. Nothing but righteousness. Even to the point that they all thought he was the Christ. All of them there. Just like when they thought Jesus was the Christ. Well, for a long time they thought. And John kept telling them, I am not the Christ, but he that cometh after me, he shall fill you with the Holy Ghost. He will baptize you with fire. Every time they called him Christ, he said, no, 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 no. It's not me, it's him. And you can always tell People that really have a covenant with God and mean it with all their heart. They always point every good work, every favor, everything that happens to him. And you can tell the people that are all proud about themselves. Every time God does something, they try to take credit for it. Well, if I hadn't have been there, maybe the Lord wouldn't have moved. Yeah. Maybe if he hadn't have been there, he'd have moved greater. <laughs> so anyway... We see Zacharias is at the altar and he's already had these prayers obviously for years. Nobody that old goes in and prays for his wife to get pregnant. Hello? And so when the angel shows up, it shocks him to the point. He's like, not now, I'm too old. Can't do this. And, he, and now listen, John the Baptist must be born. The prophecies must come to pass. They have to come to pass. And John the Baptist... His whole destiny is hinged on the lips of Zechariah. If Zechariah goes, it can't be, and starts walking in doubt and unbelief, it's on. But once God spoke the words through Gabriel, and they went to Zach, Zach as a priest should have agreed with the words and began to speak them. But instead he went against them. And when he did, God just zipped his lip. He said, he said, I've done said what I've said, I'm being the Lord. I've said what I've said through Gabriel, and nothing's going to change it, and I'll shut your mouth because your rudder on your mouth is not going to change this. So we'll just put your little rudder up. And so he put his tongue away, and then here comes God. And God takes over and does it. And I love it. I love how Jesus meets John the Baptist when Jesus is first conceived, remember she said, so be it unto me according to thy word. That's when she became pregnant. The word became the semen. And the semen, the word of God, took an egg that has no blood in it. Woman, eggs in a woman have no blood. And all of a sudden, the blood of God covered that egg. And that egg began to be God himself growing in a womb while God himself is still all over the universe. And God was doing it to bring a redemptive plan to man to set him totally free in every area of his life. And the mystery, and I'm about out of time, so I better get to it. And the mystery of the gospel is just absolutely, it is just so, so important. Let's see, can you pull those scriptures up that I gave you? I want you to look at Colossians 1 and verse 26 and 27. 
And he makes it real clear, Ephesians 1, and I want you to listen to this, Ephesians 1 and 9, it says, He has made known to us the mystery of his will. And then, no, I want you to pull up Colossians 1, 26 and 27. I was just talking about Ephesians. <laughs> Amen. Even the mystery that has been hid from the ages, from the generations, that mystery, but now is made manifest to his saints. Next verse. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is what? What? That word Christ means the anointing of God. That was the mystery that the devil was talking about when the scripture says, had he known what the mystery of the gospel was, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Because the word Christ is the anointing and it's the word. The word Christ is the word. He is the word. The mystery of the gospel is that sack of seeds, when it gets in you, Christ comes out. The devil didn't know that. He didn't know that a man and a woman could have the seeds of God put in that flesh body and back up a little bit and give it some time and watch God come out. Are you hearing me? You put the word in there, it comes out. It says lay hands on the sick. It comes out when you lay hands on the sick. When it says cast out devils, it manifests when you speak to a devil. When, I was just thinking about last Sunday when I was just telling y'all, when I get up in the mornings and I feel pain, I speak to my body. I don't mean I act like I'm happy about it. I didn't mean that, but I'm serious. I have the same thoughts everybody does. I, I mean, the thoughts, of, man, that's, that could take this off. That could amputate this. I have all those thoughts. They're like birds flying everywhere. I just don't let them land and build their nests and lay their eggs. I keep shooing. I shoo them. So when I get up, if I get up, one, I got up one morning, this was a few years ago, but I couldn't see out of my right eye. It was just gone. I don't know where my sight went. And I just got up and I noticed it. I thought, what? What? <laughs> and I was, so I just, no, 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 no. I can see in Jesus' name. I speak to my eye. I command it to be healed. I didn't deny that I couldn't see out of that eye. I, but I just didn't spend the whole day going, I can't see. I can't see out of my eye. Hey, y'all, I can't see. Hey, I can't see. You're a nurse. Can you tell why? I can't see. And you just, you know, I can't see. Well, sure. I understand. But there's a lot more words that can help you. Because once you come to the revelation, you can't see. You need that other revelation, walking by faith, to pop in. Because when you walk by faith, it's not by sight. Are you all right? My time's up and I got to quit. But I want you to get this scripture. We always talk about this one a lot. Ephesians 4.29, it says, Don't let any corrupt communication, words, come out of your mouth, mouth, mouth. Only that which is good for the use of edify. And it's that simple. Church, we just got to speak good over people. We got to minister to people. Faith is love. Love is what you do, not how you feel. And speaking the word over one another, you know. Uh, I, I've, I was one of you in here, you know who you are because we've been talking and you're telling me about your eyes and your hand and the stuff your body's going through and, and all that stuff. And for things of that nature, for an example, I understand what you're saying and I understand you're trying to communicate and you should and that's all good. We just need to understand that once we're through communicating and we understand what we're talking about, now we're going to get on agreement that what you just described as what's attacking your body, we're going to get an agreement for it to get off. We're not going to get an agreement for it to get worse. We're not going to believe it can. We're not going to talk about it might kill you. We're not going to talk about it you might not see soon. We're not going to talk about you can't move your fingers. No, we're going to call you whole. We're going to say you're delivered by the stripes of Jesus. The blood is over you. We're going to start speaking the word. Because either way you go, you're going to talk. Either way. If you think I'm an idiot and you're going to go the other way, you'll do it in words. 
If you think that what I said was godly and you'd go for it, you're going to have to use words. So either way you go, you just either got to make a decision. Are you going to choose worldly words that pull you down to the earth and won't let you fly? Are you going to use God's words that will lift you up and let you fly? Amen? Glory be to God. Stand up on your feet with me. I'm excited. I can't wait to do the second service already. Glory to God. Now, do I realize how much probably dawned on everybody? I do not know because I didn't take a whole lot of time saying what I was saying. I just read it to you. I just bluntly said what I see. And whatever God shows you, greater or smaller, it's all God. I love the way I can see something and show it to somebody and they saw something else. I was trying to show them what I saw and they ended up showing me what they saw. And I'm like, wow, this is the most pregnated book you've ever get your hands on. It, it's one little stone in that book. It's got so many glitters. But it's one stone. It's not a bunch of different rocks. Amen? One rock. Christ Jesus. All right. Do y'all love each other? Turn around tell somebody. Say, I love you. Oh, that was good. I love Y'all do love each other. Father, I thank you for the power of your word. And I thank you that all of us will have a greater wisdom when we come and worship you and hear a word from you. That instead of saying, I'm too old. It's not time. It's not right. Too late. I thank you, Father God, that if you do have to shut our mouths for the will and the purpose of God to manifest in our family, our homes, our community, then just so be it. But we pray for the wisdom to know when to keep it shut like your word says. Study to be quiet. Know when to keep your mouth shut and know when to speak. And the word says when you don't know what to say, just open your mouth. God will fill it full of his word. Father, I thank you for it. Grace this people and bless them in all that they do in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. I love you. Go do that word.